Have you ever wondered how those fancy robots that transport parts on assembly lines and factories work? I saw such a robot at Opel factory here in Poland, I asked a lot of questions and they explained to me how it works. I instantly understood that this is just a really advanced line follower. Instead of black tape there is magnetic strip and instead of light sensors there are magnetic sensors, that's basically all. Of course there are all those safety features and other smart things. But at this point I started thinking that maybe I can build my own smaller, cheaper, simpler and open source version of such a robot that will be able to smartly transport stuff around. Sounds like a big challenge, that's what I like. I started by doing something that I usually don't do, I designed it on a paper. I'm pretty bad at drawing, but those drawings turn out great in my opinion. I didn't want to start designing straight in CAD because I would end up with cuboid on wheels and I wanted to make it look beautiful. So as a good starting point I drew a cuboid with motors, but this looked awful so I started to experiment a little bit with the front and back of the robot. And finally I found the shape that satisfied me. There is a lot of cargo space and a lot of space for electronics. Then I designed bottom of the robot to fit all of the sensors and inside of the front part that will be 3D printed. Out of that drawing I made my cut design in Fusion 360. I decided to cut body of the robot on a laser cutter, which I don't have, so I had to order that online. And I started printing front part of the robot, which took over 8 hours. I want to make it look more professional so I'm going to paint it and hopefully it will look more like injection molded than 3D printed. Laser cut parts are ready and if everything will be fine we can join them together with my 3D printed part. I sand it down a few times and paint it also a few times. So right now it is just super shiny and perfect and we can join together the 3D printed part and the laser cut parts. Now we have to let it dry for some time and we can start connect the electronics but to do so I have to design the schematic so please give me a few minutes. My fritzing schematic is ready and I wanted to make this schematic in fritzing because fritzing schematics are super simple to understand for beginners so that's a huge plus of that and I wanted to make a PCB in KiCad but because I already had a schematic in FreeSync I decided to also use FreeSync to design a PCB in fact that's the software that I used to design my very first PCB and here it is uh, really well packed I spent a lot of time on rearranging the components right here to make it as small as I can to easily fit all of that in the 3D printed part and it turns out quite good. If you have never made a PCB I really encourage you to make one because it is a super fun thing to do and it's also make your project a lot more professional, it's safer, it's smaller and it just looks a lot better. So if you have never made a PCB, try it. But if you really don't want to make a PCB, you can always use my breadboard schematic 
and connect all of that together just like it is without any PCB, without soldering, with a breadboard cables or something like this. It should also work fine, but you may not be able to fit all of that in a 3D printed part. Let's go and make a PCB! PCB is ready, I made it using a thermal transfer method at home, I haven't been doing that for a very long time but I still know how to do this and this PCB turns out ok, it's not perfect but it should easily work fine. You cannot really compare that to a professionally manufactured PCB but I don't have time to order one so I had to make it like this. I'm still waiting for my glue to dry so I will start soldering this PCB now. Soldering done. It was quite easy as for DIY PCB and it does look good, it's pretty nice and pretty small. Of course the jumpers don't look good but it's necessary to make it working so we cannot do anything about that. But I didn't test the PCB yet so let's connect the battery and see if there is no smoke. So it looks like everything is working fine, there's no smoke, so it should work fine. Also my glue is dry, so we can connect the 3D printed part and motors to the rest of the frame. Connecting all of the electronics wasn't hard at all, but it was really tricky. There is a lot of cables, space is really tiny and holes are small, so it's hard to get all the cables through them. But it's not a big deal and you can easily do this. I'm really happy that I managed to fit all of the parts inside 3D printed part. It looks really clean and I will close it on the back with some 3D printed flaps, but firstly I have to write a program and upload it to the Arduino. program is ready, I upload it to the Arduino. It should work really fine, I hope so. Now we can close the flaps on the back with some screws. I also added a switch on the back of the left flap so that I can turn on and off my robot. I just cut one of the cables from the battery plug and connect it to the switch. But I didn't just write a code for the Arduino, I decided to actually make it a little bit simpler for you to modify the code and adjust it to your needs. 
This is just a really simple program that you can run on Windows. You can set up your card ID, you can set up what should it do and easily export that as Arduino Array. Then you have to paste it to the Arduino ID and you can upload it to your Arduino. I assigned in my program some tasks for the Arduino robot. There are four things, title, type, value and card ID. Title is just for you, it's not really important for Arduino. Then as a type, you have to choose what your robot should do when it detects this kind of card. So let's say that we want just to stop. And here is a value. What does it mean? It's how long the robot should do the certain thing in milliseconds. So in this case we want our robot to stop for 3000 milliseconds, which is just 3 seconds. Then we have to put our card ID. To know my card ID, I connect another RFID module to the Arduino Uno. Write a simple program for it, I will also link this down in the description. Then I wrote down all of the card IDs and stick it to all of the cards so that I know which card has which ID so I can simply modify my code. How to put those values into Arduino IDE? All you have to do is to click generate and copy to clipboard. Then open your Arduino IDE and in this place instead of those arrays and also this defined it's very important you have to paste what you just copied. Before we will test the robot we have to create some kind of trace for it and I should also mention that I wanted to use a magnetic strip and magnetic sensor for that but it turns out that magnetic strip is not strong enough and that magnetic sensor is not sensitive enough to use it so I end up with a black tape which also should work fine. All you have to do is to put some black tape on the floor or some kind of surface and then put RFID tags next to the line so that the robot can detect them. Once you have done that, we are ready to go. To test it properly, I set up a very simple assembly line where we have some items, we have to put stickers on them and then move them to the warehouse. There was a lot of things that could go wrong in this project, but everything turned out almost perfectly. The design, the assembling and the final test went so smoothly that I'm really surprised. And when I said that a lot of things could go wrong in this project, I really mean that because I have never designed anything for razor cutting. I even wasn't sure if the idea of scanning RFID tags on the ground will work properly, but it turns out that there is no problem with that. Probably this robot is not ready to be used on the assembly line, or maybe it is, I don't know. But I'm sure that this is a great starting point to create open source solution for the industry. To make manufacturing cheaper and to make it more accessible for all of the people and all of the companies. Because you don't need millions of dollars to create things and to create machines that can help you create things. You can make an open source solutions that will be cheap and can be used by everyone. If you want to find more information about this project, there is a link to hackster.io in the description of this video and you can find there everything. The schematics, 3D files, dates, F files, images and a very detailed description on how to make this project. If you still have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I will answer them as soon as I can. If you like my video, don't forget to share it and subscribe to my channel to don't miss any of my new projects. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making. Bye.